Hello, and welcome to Gatherous News Unscripted. My name is Raphael Timmons. I am your host on Tuesdays. Today's show is brought to you by C-Note. C-Note, invest in an economy that works for everyone. You can find them at www.mycnote.com. Uh, education, perhaps more than other fields, was particularly impacted by the pandemic. As educators and students struggled to adjust, an idea came to fruition that would allow them to reconnect. A twin VR virtual campus. Today, we're talking with Dr. Musina Morris as she shepherds the next generation of professionals emerging from the VR space. Dr. Morris obtained her BS in chemistry from Clark Atlanta University and later her PhD in biomolecular chemistry from Emory University. After years of teaching and research in the physical world, she took her wealth of knowledge to the virtual one. In 2021, she became director of Morehouse in the Metaverse, Morehouse College's VR program, and founded Metaverse Universe or Metaverse United, an educational consulting agency. She joins us now. Dr. Morris, thank you for being here with me today. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be here. We're so excited to have you. This is my first inaugural show, so you're a very special guest. Um, <laughs> so Warhouse College's VR program has been making a lot of news recently. Um, you guys are breaking ground with a black history course that you guys are offering, a first of its kind. Uh, but this is hardly the first first for Morehouse College. Tell us about how Morehouse College is a pioneer in the space. So Morehouse College in the spring of 2021, along with a wonderful ed tech company, Victory XR, and that's actually version one of our campus. We actually are on version Morehouse Digital Twin 2.0. So we have some upgrades that have happened, but we have been working with Victory XR since the um, fall of 2020 to bring to life education and what a metaversity would look like. So Morehouse College is the blueprint. We started off with three courses, my advanced in organic chemistry course, a men's health biology course taught by Dr. Ethel Vereen and a world history course taught by Dr. Opel Hamilton. And we also did cross-disciplinary lessons with our English professor, Dr. Tanya Clark. So we are the VR pioneers from Morehouse College and we made it our business to actually do immersive virtual reality, making it the classroom and not just doing the same status quo thing. So we do a multi-sensory um, type of lesson for our students where they get the auditory, visual, and kinesthetic skill sets that they need to be successful in their disciplines. Well, speaking of the students, what, what's been the reaction from students who have now experienced Morehouse Colleges? Uh, oh, they are, they are so excited. And it's so funny because I saw a student um, at our education end of the year celebration and he was saying, I thought that my, my, my roommate was tripping when he said that he was in class in VR, but he had the headset and he was doing things. And I was like, I can't wait to take one of those classes. So students are excited. It's helping them gain confidence in themselves. It's allowing them to see themselves aligned with technology careers that they didn't even imagine. And it's giving them capacity because they also have the ability to create in the space. So we allow them to create their own virtual worlds and their own experiences as well. And and bouncing off of that concept of you know providing skills for careers, um, Web3 VR is emerging. Um, you're providing Morehouse graduates with those skills. Uh, for people that don't know, Morehouse is an all-male, predominantly Black HBCU. How yeah. important is it for these young men to leave school with these, these cutting-edge skills in these emerging spaces? It is extremely important, and it is the reason why this program needs to be sustainable, needs to last. It's because our young Black men are last in so many different areas, and we have 2,200 wonderful, bright, brilliant, matriculating students that come through Morehouse College. It's the alma mater of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., um, Senator Raphael Warnock, Spike Lee, Samuel L. Jackson. So you have all of these big names who have come through the halls or the gates or the yard of Morehouse College. The thing that is so important now with our young black men is that in order to overcome 20 generations of inability in this country to take part in just the economics of, of this country. Um, our students need to innovate. They need to innovate, they need to align with technology and they need to define the culture because they already do it. And so it's like giving them the exposure that they need allows them the ability to create generational wealth, 
to see themselves as entrepreneurs and innovators to help them understand how to protect their intellectual property in the space. And so it's extremely important because I don't care if you're a political science major, this is the new wave. Emerging technologies is something that is not going to stop in my generation. And I'm about to date myself. I've seen the computer, the internet, all of that come to fruition. We had a class on email. So I'm just saying these young people now have an opportunity to not participate in it, but to also build it. So our motto is build the metaverse table. And that's the way that we're going to create lasting self-reliance and prosperity within our communities and put our young black men at the heads of their households and communities and leadership like they're supposed to be. And speaking of community, we're seeing the impact of VR extend beyond both the physical and digital walls of Morehouse's campus. Um, how have you seen VR change the lives of other other people, other students in the Atlanta area in Georgia? So, so many things that are happening. We saw student achievement increase at Morehouse College, and that's when we knew, okay, this is wonderful. We saw our student achievement go up by 11.9%. Students were coming to class more 10 percentage points increase in attendance rate. No student dropped our metaverse class. And that made me say, hmm, as an educator, what do we need to do? Build a pipeline. So we always talk about building a pipeline. So we have a lab school that um, is a part of our education department, which I'm a part of now and, and happy to be in. And what we do there is we got our educators into the headsets. And we did that by doing an educator training through mindfulness practices, which made them get used to it. And now that school, Utopian Academy for the Arts, which is headed by Dr. Artesius Miller. And um, he is now using it in his high school to teach biology. They're starting with STEM, they're doing it as a disciplinary intervention. But we're also helping rural schools. So we have um, one of our VR pioneers, Dr. Obel Hamilton, has allowed um, the Arkansas Board of Education to see how we can create a metaversity, well, like a metaversity kind of like template to plug in certified teachers in the metaverse space. So where there's a teacher shortage, there isn't because our young people can tap into the power of VR and it's geographically agnostic. So people don't have to move to rural Arkansas to be able to reach those students. And so it's plugging gaps um, for communities that don't have access to quality certified teachers. We're doing that in the Atlanta area, but we're also doing it in um, other areas around the world and around the country. So I got some other countries um, that we are bringing on to that need qualified, certified teachers, and we're doing that. Morehouse that's Beyond Borders. That's amazing. Um, you know, a lot of critics might point to the struggles that students and teachers did have during remote learning, um, adjusting to being in the Zoom classroom. Um, how is how is the shift to a VR classroom maybe different from that remote learning? Are we not going to run the, the risk of having the same problems that we saw with those remote learning classes? No, because you have a sense of presence. It's not that they're asynchronous or they're in the class by themselves just doing lessons and in this like simulated world. No, we are there with them. And so they're in our presence. Their avatar shows up in that space but they are actually with the instructor. So we're able to guide their experience. And so they have that subject matter expert right there in the classroom with them, giving them the tools that they need, checking on them, making sure that they are learning the concepts and that they understand how to apply everything that they're learning. And so it's a difference when um, you're on Zoom, you can only do breakout rooms you, you, and the teacher is not always in them. And so you're rotating through those rooms, trying to figure out, are they on task? That doesn't happen in our in our setting because we are there with them, experiencing it with them. And I think the most important thing about metaverse teaching and learning is the opportunity that it provides for the student to engage with the teacher differently. My students were um, were with me and had been with me for quite some time. And I think one day I had my my head my headsets like my hands joy controllers. Uh, mixed up. And so my hands look like this in VR. And my <laughs> student said, Doc, your hands, I was like, oh my gosh, I wasn't even paying attention. And I giggled. Just that giggle alone brought joy into the classroom. And from that moment, I was like, this is transformative. Not only do I have their attention, they're engaged, they're distract, not distracted from um, cell phones or what's going on anywhere else. They're completely in this space. But there's joy here. 
and I am showing them what it's like to fail forward in your scholarship, to fail forward in what you're doing. You're not always going to get it right, but if you have joy, then you have their attention and you can captivate them. Um, so VR, Web3, moving at an incredible pace right now. It's accelerating like literally nothing we've, we've ever seen. Um, but what are your hopes for how it will change the world? And then specifically, what perspective shift are, are you working to see um, in this new space? So I call all of what I'm doing with emerging technologies opportunistic reality. Um, this opportunistic reality of mine is how can we transform the minds and hearts of the world, of humanity, um, and use technology to do it, right? How can we create communities that can come together when they can't actually gather for whatever the reason may be? But the biggest impact that I want to make in helping people find where they belong is in the neurodivergent community. So I'm a mother, I have five sons, and one, two of my sons have been diagnosed with autism. One of them has moderate um, support needs. His name is Seth. And Seth is the reason for my lab group even being at that intersection of inclusion um, because it's necessary for them to have a safe space. And so working to create more accessible content that can actually level the playing field in education for those who are neurodivergent, who have cognitive disabilities, but also those who have physical disabilities for our blind and our deaf um, communities as well. So that's really important to me is to make sure that when we say inclusion, that we mean all, truly. And, and when we speak of inclusion, we've seen so many um, DEI efforts, you know, over the last couple of years. Um, you also have your, your consultancy firm, Metaverse United. Um, have you seen efforts from the DEI space to kind of start looking at including VR as it may be a possible avenue of, you know, creating these new spaces for everyone? The, the Metaverse at this point is almost a completely blank canvas. Um, it seems like there's an opportunity there. There is a huge opportunity. And so many of my clients need a roadmap, but in order to have a roadmap into how you fit in the Metaverse, you absolutely need to know who you are like who is your organization or as a business person who who are you in this in the world so once you know who you are in the world and once we can identify what your niche is the thing that you do well and better than anything else then we're able to actually define your metaverse culture for you and so i call that metaverse culture optimization and that's what i do i do that for um, the youngest of young and the oldest of old i do that for in service and pre-service instructors in the education space, but I do it for the community because I think it's really important for um, communities that don't have access to technology to understand that they also have a place and a space in this world. Inclusivity and connection, that's so beautiful. Dr. And Morris, belonging. And belonging, and belonging. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. Morris, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I can't wait to see what comes next. All right, make sure that you find me at Unite the Metaverse Dot com. I'll be looking forward to continuing to build community, continuing to um, do everything that we can to evangelize the metaverse as a safe space for all. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you so you much, Dr. Morris. Me. Absolutely. We'll be in touch. All right. Take care. Um, and on tomorrow's show, uh, Lisa Bernard will be speaking with author and podcaster Sam Kamani about the most current news this week in Web3. Uh, and also on Lisa's show tomorrow, the first pioneer profile, Exploring Equality with Amy Lemire. Amy is managing partner of the WXR Fund, which invests in female entrepreneurs. A big thank you again to our sponsors for today's show, CNote. CNote is a cutting edge woman-led FinTech company that gives corporations, institutions, and individuals a simple, effective way to invest in under-resourced communities at scale. We thank Kat Berman and the CNote team for their support. If you'd like to sponsor us yourself in the future, please get in touch through the Gatherverse News sponsorship page. That's our show for today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll be back here next Tuesday. Lisa Bernard will be here tomorrow. We hope to see you. Thank you and have a great day.